Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar this afternoon on behalf of DLTV. We are going to be looking at ICT in the primary PE classroom. My name is Adriana Pinder, and I'm from Atchbar, Victoria, representing our health and PE teachers. We also have Catherine Newington from the Australian Computer Society. And I'm very pleased to welcome Jay McPherson, who is the eLearn coordinator at Penley and Essendon Grammar School, also a PE trained teacher. So she's got lots of insight to share with us during today's session. Now, this uh, webinar is um, recorded, but we are available throughout the session to respond to your questions on the chat feed. So if you do have any questions you would like to share, um, and find out some more information on, please do put them in the chat feed. We'll respond to you then. Otherwise, we'll be available at the end of the session uh, to talk through some more of your questions. One of the most important things when we are integrating technology into any classroom and any um, lessons, and especially your PE ones, is looking at the pedagogy and technology and how both of those are so important and they marry together. When you are looking for digital technologies within that PE um, lessons, one thing that I would highly recommend looking at is your own pedagogy, so your own style of teaching, and that will drive the type of technology that you're going to be using. Don't feel as though you need to put in every single type of technology into your lessons as well. So it's really about um, thinking about the needs of your school, what you have access to, um, and then what you feel comfortable doing as well. And most importantly for me, I always look at the curriculum and then look at the technology that's going to support you to, um, to um, assess those outcomes and to, to gather all of that information for that student reporting and the student outcomes. Because at the end of the day, we need to honour the curriculum and not to use technology for the sake of it. So focusing on then what you have available at your school will certainly influence what, what you are able to um, integrate into your PE lessons. Um, one of the most important things is that, you know, education is one of those things where we don't just want to have a cookie cutter style of education. So therefore, we don't want to have technology that's just going to be used all across different areas as well. So it is quite a personal and school related thing as well. Throughout this um, presentation, we're going to show you different examples of it, but always keep relating those examples back to your own environment, your school, and what you're able to do as well. So, Jane, I'm going to pass it over to you now, and I want you to tell us about how you focus on pedagogy and curriculum in your classes and also that physical education classes as well. I think the major thing when I started out with technology in the phys ed was looking at um, what the outcome that I wanted. Um, I, as we know with uh, phys ed, it is about the physical aspect. So we are wanting the students to be active. We're wanting them to be physically doing something. So as soon as we think about technology, we start to um, restrict that phys physical element of the class. So it's really focusing on what is that technology going to do for the class? Is it actually going to enhance and transform the learning? And if it's not, then we probably shouldn't have it in there. So it's, you know, that shiny object, that fancy app, that um, fun game, is it actually going to enhance what the students are learning? And if it's not, and it's not actually adding that element to it that the students walk away and, and have a better understanding of what they should know, then we really have to think about did the technology have a purposeful meaning to that lesson. Um, so, um, and it, it can and also be looked at as, as um, for admin. So did it save you time? Did it um, make your lesson more efficient? Were you able to do more? Were you able to give more feedback, um, be more reflective? Um, were you able to spend more time with the student? Um, so is the technology actually enhancing either your teaching or your learning during that lesson? And I think that's the key thing we have to remember, especially in the phys ed world, more probably more so, or, or in worlds where you have that physical element because we are focused on getting the students active and, and doing things. Um, so so, and as, as you alluded to, I think the key thing is a, a lot of, a lot of um, teachers that I speak to or, or, um, when it comes to, oh, but I don't have one-to-one -one and I don't have um, that particular device or I don't have that technology, focus on what you do have. And if you're not sure what you can do with what you have, then speak to people who do understand because there are elements that um, you can still do with, um, sorry about the bell, um, that you can still do with, 
one device or you can do with a range of devices or um, I started out with one iPad. That's all I had. I had one iPad, it was mine, um, and I had to think about, well, what was, what was it that's going to improve that lesson by having that one iPad? Was I going to improve my feedback to the students? Was I going to improve, improve um, the way I collected evidence? I had to think about the outcome of the lesson first before I then thought about where the technology fitted into that lesson. No, some really fantastic points. And I think when you talk about what your what you have at your school and focusing on what you can do, I guess if you don't have that one-to-one, -one, it might be more about how you communicate messages and how you save time. And if that's a starting point and it gets you to the next point, the next point for you on your ICT journey, that's a fantastic thing. So take those small opportunities where you can. Now yeah. starting out with uh, technology, I guess. Last year was a fantastic example of where a lot of um, teachers in PE, we really discovered how many were just in their early stages. COVID really forced a lot of PE teachers to think more about technology, how they use it, how it connects to the PE curriculum. Um, and I know from our perspective, we had a lot of conversations with teachers who were starting out and just said, what do I do? How do I bring it in? Because they'd just been so hands-on and so practical with their students, they hadn't even considered it. Um, and that's okay, because you know, we've got to start somewhere. Um, so I think it's just really important to remember that wherever you are on your journey, that's okay. And just try and think of what I guess is the next thing for you. Now, um, Jane, what was, I guess, in starting out with technology, you've been involved in, in teaching and PE now for a while. Um, what, what were some of the most effective ways that you first implemented technology when you started out as a PE teacher? I think the key, the key aspect here is to not overwhelm yourself and to remember that you're a learner as well. Um, I think a lot of people, um, they might look at someone who is proficient with technology and think that they have to jump into that deep end and go, right, I've got the technology, I've seen how someone does this and I've just got to jump in and I've got to, I've got to take this on and I've got to do everything. You've got to remember that you're a learner as well. You're just the same as the students that you teach. So if you're thinking, okay, I'd like to improve the way I collect evidence, I'd like to record some videos, I'd like to take some notes, then start small. Um, so when I first did it, I started with four students. I'd, I'd brainstorm with a completely different student. So a um, staff member, um, I was the sole visitor in the school. So I had to go and um, brainstorm with someone else. I had to bounce ideas off with someone else. And I said, all right, I'm going to try this with just six kids today in one of my lessons, you know, chose, chose that class that was, you know, that little bit more compliant so that I knew that I could get the rest of the class going. Um, I had a system set up. I had managed the class. And then I set myself up and I recorded six kids. And I set myself that self-confidence that I could manage those six kids. I got the feedback I wanted. I was able to give the feedback to the kids or I was able to record that evidence and I could use it and I could see the benefit of that technology. Then I could aim for the next step. Then I could aim for, okay, now I'm going to add in um, the whole class next time. And then in a couple of weeks time, I'm going to do the whole school. I'm going to have it all set up for every single class. So you need to remember that you are the learner. So every new tool that you get start small. You don't have to jump in the deep end with it. Once you gain your confidence while using technology and you have 26 pairs of eyes staring back at you, or 30 in some cases, um, then you can jump in and you can try and do more with it. And you have that confidence that when something goes wrong, you, you just run with it. And it's water off a duck's back. But until that stage, you've got to feel confident in that room that okay, I can do this. And then you're more likely to go back and try that technology again. Um, I think that's the, probably the biggest advice I can give anyone. Um, and as you alluded to, we're still realising that a lot of teachers are at that early stage of adopting technology into their lessons when they're outside, no table, no um, nice little setup of technology. And so they're juggling five things already and we're throwing in another thing. So we're realising they're still at that stage. So while they're still at that stage, giving that confidence to try something new. And it might be about themselves too, not about the students. Um, it could be that um, 
a QR code so it helps them give an instruction. So they've recorded or they've got a recording of an activity so they can set up a QR code so the student can watch the video again. So they've actually supported themselves in giving that um, instruction again. So that's use of technology in a positive way, but um, doesn't hinder what you're doing in class and so you can go oh okay I've added technology that has actually supported the lesson I've done that successfully now I can try something new so adding things to step by step in small steps so that I can I can build my self-confidence to take on more technology um, and share those success, successes with other people um, as we know in a primary school you you're likely to be the sole person taking on that role um, it is its own little world um, we all teach phys ed and um, likely to have other teachers not have the same success with students as they have in a different environment. So share those successes with others um, and so that you can be rewarded for the, the things that you are doing. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the best advice I can give starting out with technology. Yeah, and, and I'd like to add on that is that when you are starting out with technology, don't be hard on yourself either. And don't um, don't set these unrealistic expectations of what you should be doing and, and where you think it is. And don't think too much about that end product, but think about the little bite-sized little journeys that you can take yourself on to get to that end um, part where you can see a lot more integration of technology within your PE classes as well. And one thing that I always make sure teachers um, provide themselves with is that, is that opportunity just for skill development um, as a teacher. So then you understand what technology you're going to be using. So sometimes you might need to take that time out outside of the lessons and it does get quite overwhelming. But when you give yourself that time to, to skill yourself up just a little bit, um, then you'll be able to have that little bit more confidence when you are using technology in your PE class. And also then that transition into the students as well. So don't expect them to be experts within that technology straight away. And I love the idea of using a small group because once you've also got those students that are used to the um, technology, they can also become experts within your class as well. So it's not just you as a teacher and the solo teacher leading that um, skill development, but you've all of a sudden got six or seven other students and can, can break away and provide those skills and expertise to different um, groups as well. So roll it out as a little bit of a network. Some great, great apps that might, um, that start you off and, and, and this might support surprise some of you is just using your timer it might be using um, just a, a, a document that takes the score down it might be um, just a simple YouTube video that you're showing the kids it might be as simple as um, there's a couple apps that just do P warm-up games that you're just relying on to you know give the students something new um, it might be the round robin app there's a great one when you're doing sport ed that will record the results for you and give you a nice little ladder and do all that um, calculations for you so it might be just using a little bit of tech for you that takes away that calculation and those little things that you usually scribble down on a piece of paper and if you were anything like me you would have lost that piece of paper before you finished the lesson um, and then that was it for the next lesson and you'd start a new ladder and everything for the next lesson um, so it might even just be those small things if you're that new to technology and you need that confidence to just pick something up and try it and hold on to that confidence for the next lesson. So assessment and reporting um, is probably one of the spaces where PE teachers can start using ICT to support their admin. Um, I guess with IC, uh, with, sorry, with assessment, um, PE can often involve a lot of subjective assessment and bringing in technology is a way that we can start to um, build our portfolio of evidence to show um, teachers, uh, other teachers, students and parents I guess the reasons why we're giving students certain grades with our reporting. We've got some more evidence to support our judgment. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing it. I know Jane has probably some good ideas of how to share that. Uh, but I guess do think about the use of technology with assessment and reporting in PE as a way of building your portfolio. And also from a formative perspective where you can involve your students and use technology during the lesson to communicate feedback and that can also take you out of the process as well. So how can they give self and peer feedback using technology too? Um, Jane, do you want to elaborate a little bit more on effective use of technology to support assessment from your perspective? 
Yeah, um, I think the clear picture again is making sure that you know what your outcome is going to be. Um, so again, um, knowing what you want to record. Uh, we could sit here and record lots of little things out of the lesson. Um, we could record them doing anything and everything from the lesson, but making sure that whatever you're set out to teach and focus on and what your teaching points are, then whatever the evidence that you're collecting, is, and as strange as that sounds, I think sometimes we get the device in our hand and we get excited and we've got this technology and we set up and record it and we um, then have 50 other things happen in the class because that kid over there is now not doing what he's meant to be doing or she's over there doing something else and the ball's gone over the fence or whatever and then we sort of seem to forget. So as much as all that's going on, um, as we know in the physio world, it's, it's a little bit more going on than four walls, um, we need to make sure we keep focused on, okay, this is what I'm collecting today. This is the outcome I'm looking for. These are the teaching points I'm looking for. So therefore I'm collecting this evidence. So if I'm going to collect that video, then I need to make sure that's the point in that. So I'm setting up the skill to collect that evidence and making sure that I'm then observing the right um, part of the skill that I'd like to assess. Um, there's some great apps. One of the best ones, and unfortunately now it costs a little bit more. I was very lucky to get it. I think when I was about $5 and I think it costs about $20 now. Um, but if you can't get it at, um, because of the cost, I understand that you can still do it with the camera on the um, on the iPad and probably um, on, a, on another device. And I know now you can uh, organize your videos into folders. So it, there's still ways around it. So there's no, th th there are apps that do this and there's still at the basic level ways to do this. It's just depending on, again, similar to what we alluded to in the first question, um, what you have at your fingertips, you've got to make work for you. So don't be don't be restrained by oh this is what it is. It's not what it is. It, you make the technology do what you want it to do. Um, and so, Idocio is is a really great one. It's huge in its capability, but if you take it for its face value, you can actually set up. And again, I think Adrian you um, or Catherine you alluded to this that the time that you spend setting up um, and and preparing yourself is the time that you know then don't need to do further down the track. So if you set yourself up and you know that you're going to teach this unit, these are the outcomes that you're going to teach. These You can set that all up in these sorts of apps or you could use a Google Sheet or you could use the camera roll, whatever it is that you would like to use and work for you, which I think we've already alluded to. You've got to make the technology work for you. Use what you're comfortable using. They all work on the iPad quite well or, or a um, mobile device. And then making sure that... Um, you're actually collecting the video and potentially making note or also then taking more assessment after the fact as well. One video um, at the end of the unit doesn't necessarily give you that journey of that learning. So, okay, we've done the learning of the overhand throw. I've taken a video of that kid at the end of the, the unit I did there, but we all know that learning happens over time. So just because I get to the end of the semester and I go back to, um, you know, go back to February and we did it back then and I've assessed them, but by the time they get back to, you know, the end of the semester, if I haven't taken another note in that um, skill, I'm not showing any progression for that student and not showing any progress. So we've got to make sure that even though we've got this lovely device and we're using the technology to collect the evidence, that we're actually going back and making sure that the evidence is clear, that the assessment is being shown and there's progress. So that, as you said, we're, we're actually showing the parents that, yeah, we do have clear, valuable evidence of this student showing progress over time. And that might be that they use the emojis as a little rating system of, you know, we started out, they were like a sad face or a medium face or a happy face, or you might have a little flag system. You also can take little notes of, you know, missed that particular teaching point. And then at the end, you take a video of their final one, or you might take a video at the start of week one, and then at, you know, the end of the semester, you take your videos. So this allows you that ability to take that richer evidence of a physical lesson, which is, is probably the value um, the other great thing about it is that we now can give timely feedback to the students. So this evidence that we're collecting, instead of holding on to us and we're like, oh, yeah, we're collecting it, we're being good teachers, we, we, if we can include the students in that process and make it about the student learning and give them ownership to their own learning and show them their own journey along the way, 
we're providing not only valuable evidence to ourselves with the use of technology, but we're also allowing the students in on that journey so they can ask to see what they look like in term one. And then when they go to do it in term two, they can then see their own progress. So whether you've got a one device or many devices, you can see the difference between, or the student can see the difference between one and, and um, one step one and, and step two. There's another great app for that, which doesn't require um, recording, which is BAM Video Delay. Um, I've used that one um, when we did hurdles. So you can set it up, you can put it on a delay. And so then by the time the student gets back to you, you can be standing there with them and they're watching themselves go over that hurdle and you can point out a teaching point. And so it's not a recording, so you don't have to worry about stories. You don't have to worry about where you're gonna keep all these videos. It's just a constant recording of, of seeing it. And so then they can see one thing and then they can go back and do it again. And then they can um, try and um, improve on that thing and have that timely feedback in that moment. So using that technology again. So if you're not comfortable with recording, all the lesson, but you want to try something, um, the BAM video delay gives you that instant feedback in the lesson for, for evidence. Some really good, simple tricks in there, some simple apps. Um, a BAM video delay is one I know I've used quite a bit, and it's just the, the students are so mesmerised sometimes by seeing themselves on a screen, but there's also a way that they, the video communicates to them in a way that we sometimes can't. We can give them that feedback and say, you've got to, you know, turn your leg out more when you're getting over the hurdle or whatnot. But unless they see it, it doesn't sink in. So giving them the opportunity to get that timely feedback is so important. Now, yeah. and if you've also got um, mobile devices available for you as well, look at, and if you don't have access to the apps, look at the actual inbuilt camera and now the functions, because every time we're doing, um, you know, updates, I'm finding that the actual inbuilt camera features are developing and improving as we go on as well. So if you don't have access or, or can't afford any of those apps or it's just not, a, not an option to have anything paid, look at the actual inbuilt functions of um, the cameras that we have in devices. Now. Yeah, I know. I think the um, even the slow-mo camera recording, if you had to use that, fantastic for PE to really give you the time to explain your teaching points and what you're looking for. Now, our final um, point of discussion is around supporting student learning. So obviously anything we do in the classroom as a teacher, a key focus really is to ensure that our students are progressing. That's what we wanna help them do. So bringing in assessment, uh, sorry, bringing in ICT really needs to tie in with that. We don't wanna bring in ICT at the detriment of student learning. Um, and there's probably a few different ways in which that can happen. So probably the most common ones would be that the, um, it's a really shiny, great, engaging, interactive app, but it actually doesn't reflect the curriculum and what we're supposed to be doing. It's outside of our scope, essentially. So that can obviously take away then from on task time and the, the time that we have in PE is often, you know, we struggle to get the time we want. So make use of it well. So by adding in those apps that don't actually meet the curriculum is probably not the greatest point. So think of something that actually links to the curriculum. You also sometimes have... Uh, an, an app or a piece of technology you want to bring in that your students spend so long learning how to use it that again it detracts from your on task time so I guess think about ways in which you can introduce things slowly or if you're going to spend the time improving students um, knowledge and understanding of how to use a piece of technology it's something that they can use consistently across the year so you're not wasting time reteaching things over and over uh, Jane, did you have, I guess, a couple of suggestions and ideas around how technology has supported student learning and your views on that? Yeah, I think I think this links, in my view, it links very closely to it when you're assessing, because I, I strongly believe that when you're assessing the students should be part of that journey and it shouldn't be that they see you as doing it and you're not part of that journey and, and why why don't I know what you're sort of writing down? And obviously, if, unless it's something, you know, crucial that they don't need to know, they should be part of that journey from, from my view because it's, it's theirs, it's not yours, it's their learning journey. Um, but when I look at it, when I was, um, especially probably for the grade five, sixes and maybe some of the three, fours, my biggest thing was, um, you know, not all students are out and I'll, I'll, I'll show my age a little bit here, but you, you Michael Jordans and you're, and you're, you're elites. And so you're not going to get every student being able to perform those tasks perfectly. They're not going to be able to do it. It's just, 
it's just the nature of the beast. We're going to have a range. It's going to happen. So, but that doesn't mean when I speak to that student, they can't actually tell me that I'm meant to do this with my arm or I'm meant to do this with my leg or I'm meant to do this when I hit the ball or whatever it is. So I got to the point where I was like, well, technology could actually probably tell me that Just wait for the bell, it was a bit easier. Um, I got to the point where I thought, well, maybe there's a way that I can allow every student to be included in that learning process. Yes, we were still active. They worked in teams to show me what the teaching points were. So yeah, they were hitting a ball off the tee. So I got them to take photos of the, the teaching points that I had um, spoken to them about. They then made a poster uh, um, out of that. So you can use something like Comic Life or you can even use something like Keynote. There's this great feature in Keynote that allow you to make um, placeholders for images. So you can actually, as you alluded to, you don't want to spend hours out in the phys ed world trying to teach them too much technology, even though you, you, there, there's always going to be a balance of what you need to teach as the teacher. Um, but you just don't want to spend too long doing that. But you can actually set up, set up templates with um, uh, image placeholders on it. So you can set up a nice template for them saying, well, here's stage one, two, three, four of, of this particular skill fill in the, the photos that match each of the stages and give me one or two sentences along the way that, that show me your understanding of that skill. So things like athletics um, and particular um, more challenging skills that I knew some of the students couldn't manage um, to show me uh, physically, they were able to tell me um, what, the, what, what I was looking for. And then they were able to help a friend out and do that peer support um, uh, evaluation. So, uh, you know, you, you can do your peer support, but if you're not teaching them exactly what's going on beforehand and they haven't had that learning, they're not teachers. They're only looking at a video you've given them. But if you've got them to break down the skill properly and use the technology. So, but then the other great thing about that was I could then print out these posters. I could then celebrate phys ed amongst the school, which is, doesn't normally happen because, you know, how do you do that? And I could put these great posters up around the school that showed our community what the students were learning in phys ed and, and what they actually knew. And sometimes it was the kid who wasn't the sports superstar. Sometimes it was the other kids that were shining in those little activities. And it was the use of the technology as a tool that was a, it enabled that task. But then it enabled me to say, yes, that student is capable of doing that level um, in the curriculum because they could tell me all those important things um, or they knew to, to run it away from their player. And, and so I could use the skills um, that they um, explained in those posters to, that, to identify that these students actually do know their stuff in phys ed. They may not physically be able to do it as well as, um, you know, the other kid, but they still know their stuff. And they could then, when we move to things like sport ed, they could then take on the roles of different things and actually help their, their, their teams out because they understood what was needed. They're not the superstar, but they came a superstar in another way. Oh. And another thing going on from when you are using um, you know, technology to support student learning, when you were talking about utilising Keynote, um, one thing that I always did was um, is look at how quickly that we could get that um, get the students to actually write down and show that they have their learning. A lot of the times I got them to voice record instead of actually typing. So if you're from like a low literacy skill, um, school and your students are low literacy or that they are younger students and that typing, you know, that typing is going to take them more than the actual lesson themselves, utilise the technology by actually getting them to voice record because that voice recording of, you know, one or two sentences versus them typing out is a really big difference. And then you've actually got more of an evidence from them because you can hear them talking and using the correct terminology rather than typing very basic um, sentences to... All right, we are getting to the end of our webinar now. Uh, we do have some time for questions. So if you do have any that you weren't able to ask during the session, please pop into the chat feed now and we'll be happy to respond. Um, but while we get those questions to come through, I did just want to very quickly say a big thank you to Jane. It's been great having you in here to share your insights and experience around ICT and PE. Um, and also Catherine as well. Um, although you're very much in the ICT world, you've certainly been able to help us transfer, I guess, some of those technology um, ideas and processes into a PE context really easily and clearly. So thank you both so much. Thanks, Adriana. 
Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. We had a couple of questions that came through in the chat feed um, and I think it might be just really good to know at the moment, those of you who are there, at what point you are on your current ICT journey. So are you starting out? Are you feeling okay or are you feeling a bit more expert? Um, we certainly have a range of teachers in PE who, um, who you know, at varying levels of expertise, but it's always good if we sort of have a rough idea of where people are at, um, because that does help us target a few of the things that we want to release. Just got something that's come through from Angela. Oh, I have students studying a digital tech and virus subject, and they're supposed to make a lesson plan incorporating an app. What advice could I give them? We might need a little bit more clarification on what that is. Angela, I think you can actually turn your microphone on and elaborate in a bit more detail. Just trying to work out what. Can you hear me? Yes, Ken. Sorry, just I've got kids are a bit loud. Oh, that's um, all right. Sorry. With these, there's this cohort I have and there's like 10 students and they have to do, make a lesson plan. It's part of the assessment. And their assessment is make a lesson plan and they're doing PE. And I think they, they want to do year eight PE or primary, I'm not sure what, but they have to use an application, some sort of ICT app. What what kind? I suggested things like recording, Fitbits, something that they could like for assessment purposes as well. And like during a lesson, um, I was thinking maybe they could, if they're teaching like muscle movement or something, they could do like a Quizlet or Kahoot or something like that. Um, but I was limited because I, I didn't know enough to be able to help. And what you mentioned before, what was it called? The, the band? Um, and videos away. Uh, I, that was really good. That was a good suggestion. But that would you would would you use that only for assessment, or would you use it in, within the classroom environment as well, just to see what's right, what's wrong? Yeah, I've used that to. I don't know if you can hear me. I've used that more as a instant feedback. So that's a feedback mm. tool because you put it on a delay of of um, whatever time delay you'd like it to be on. Um, yeah. So it's a real instantaneous thing. So it's not really a recording. Um, it's it's a so as I said when I did it, um, it was hurdles. So I put it on like a two minute delay. So by the time they went down the hurdles, came back around to where I was standing, it, they were then on the screen watching themselves. Um, so it's a it's an instant feedback. Um, do I need to have an Apple phone for it? Because it's an Apple. I see. Um, that's Apple. That doesn't mean that, that there's not a similar. There's another website, and I'll just grab it up and I'll put it in the chat. Um, it's called App Crawler, but it's not spelt App Crawler, so I'll put it in the chat in a minute. Okay, it's all fancy and, you know, they like to be fancy. Um, and what you can do with App Crawler is you can put in applications and websites and you can say similar. And what that does is it scrolls through and finds different applications on different um, devices and platforms and you can find similar things. So let me just find that and I'll put that website in for you. I've just got to make sure I remember how they spell it because it's all oh, weird. Oh, thanks so much. That's great. And I will throw that up for you. Um, it's not just apps, it's websites as well. So it's it's you can change it from iOS to Android or whatever, but you can use usually put in so you can put in idosio and um and say similar and then um but yeah that there it is there so you can oh, throw course. things in and and find similar so you won't necessarily find the same but if if um bam is if the developers have made it for android as well then they'll they'll um you can probably find it there so um yeah go there you go Catherine's found another one there so Love you'll it. find something similar um there'll be something there's always, as I said in the in the recording, um, it's finding something that will do what you want it to do, and you've just mm -hmm. got to be, um, you've got to be sort of real open minded. You know, a spreadsheet isn't a spreadsheet; it's a table. It can be a graph. It can be whatever you want it to be. So the same with any app or technology that you use. What do you want it to do? Make it do what you want it to do, so it enhances the learning for you and the students. The only other thing that I would yeah, want to add to that, um, sorry, Angela, how old are the students that are teaching that lesson? Um, they're adults, uh, I don't know, 18 to 26, uh, I think. Yeah, okay. That's, usually you'll find, I don't know, that group 
will be pretty good with tech, um, but try and obviously keep them focusing in on what the curricular aspects are. So what is it that you really want to achieve out of the lesson and then tie back what you think they could use ICT-wise? So probably if their focus is on the PE teaching side um, or the planning side, don't try and go too heavy on the apps. Just try and bring in one or two pieces of technology um, so it doesn't yeah. overwhelm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, think, I'd also think, you know, things like um, I know when I was injured, I used YouTube to play videos for dance videos so the kids could follow the example of what to do from the dance video or using a yoga app so that they were following the right example of what to do from the yoga app because I physically couldn't do what was required. So I used the technology to do what I couldn't do. So thinking about um, what Adriana just said, getting them to focus on what is it the technology can add to the lesson and enhance the lesson, not so much um, throwing the technology in to make it look fantastic. Yeah. I hope that helps, Angela. Um, it does. Awesome. Um, Christy, sorry, we're taking a bit of time to get to your question there. So um, you're at the point where you're using ICT for your admin data collection. Um, sorry if you noticed my dog wanting to join in on the recording as well. <laughs> He's missed me all day. Um, doing a lot of recording, that's great. Uh, so showing skills on YouTube or whatever to a class before going outside, um, don't want to spend too much time in a classroom. That's really great way to cut out on your transition time, give your students more active on task time. It could be, I guess, depending on what you have available, whether you have an iPad or a screen or something somewhere. Um, but having that pre-recorded video that you can show to your students either as soon as they walk in, so they go, here's your instructions, or if you have the capability to share that video before they actually come to class, so it might be you post it the, uh, at the end of your class this week, here's a video that I want you to watch for next week's PE class, and then you've conveyed those instructions or whatever the messages are that you want in that way. Some people would use QR codes if you've got multiple devices. So you could set up QR codes that link to the video. Yeah. Um, depends on whether you want also want to link to something that's pre-existing or you will also need to create the videos, but um, you've got a few different options there. Do you want to maybe just give us a little bit more detail on how you want to use them and we can direct it a bit more? Yeah, that's what I do. Like I should, I could have it up, like say for a skipping skill, you know, to show them, have it ready to go, so that we just sort of we've got screens in all the classroom and everything, but I don't have them in the hall or outside where I am, and I really only use my own iPad. I don't really want to take up. They do e-learning on the same day as as PE yeah. specialists, so I don't really want to take up the iPads for that. But um, yeah, so I yeah, it's a good idea. I could. That's where Google Classroom would have been handy during all the remote learning stuff. I don't really use it like that anymore, but I could post it somehow so the teachers can um, let them see it prior to the lesson or, as you say, let them have a quick look five minutes before we head out that they've already seen the skill that we're looking at. So they might not remember it the whole time, but at least they sort of know what I'm talking about before going out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Or, those quick things. And you, you're right that they did it in remote learning. That's probably one of those key things we could go, you know what, that worked really well then. Can we, how can we bring it back now? Yeah, definitely. If they could have the Google Classroom. Uh, we do use Seesaw for the juniors, so that would be a good thing that they could um, yeah. at home or with their parents, you know, or upload yeah. them, their own. Um, yeah. I've been giving them to take a video of themselves and upload it to their Seesaw portfolio to add to the teachers. So they've got, yeah, some movement yeah. in that in there as well, which has been good. And obviously stations are a really good thing. So sometimes you can have a tech station. Oh, so that yeah, could be your yeah. show and tell station. So, you know, they're doing everything, but your one station is where you do the show and tell station. Oh, yeah, that's so that's idea. where you can share it as well. Yeah, great. And just an iPad is okay, just do you think? Yeah, I, I started out with one for most of my first year using tech and it was yeah. the, I had the the tripod with the mount and whether that was where I recorded from or shared from or whatever, but that, you know, that became the tech part. And so when once they came around by the end of the lesson, everyone had access to that, oh, whether it was for me or for them. So it didn't mean it had to be with them the whole time. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Just having a quick look in case I've missed any questions. Uh, I don't think I've got any other questions that have come through, but if you do, please just send them through. Uh, Catherine, have you got anything that you wanted to mention, I guess, before we wrap up? I feel like what we had in our presentation sort of really summed up the key points. We've got the um, 
a document that you've shared as well in the chat feed that's got a list of resources. So maybe you can talk through that as well. Yeah, so um, I connected with Adriana, I think it was last year, where we looked at um, writing an article about integrating digital technologies, the curriculum, and also implementing ICT across the, um, the, the PE curriculum as well. So I've put in a link and I'll put it back in again after I finish talking, but um, I'll give you the link to the article that actually goes through a lot more detail of different things that you could do. We even suggested using VR in, in your PE classroom if that's where you're up to as well. So it goes through stages of starting out with tech and how you could use video in your classroom um, and in your classes, going all the way, or even then trying to even implement digital technologies curriculum with that data collection. And even if you're really up to it and enthusiastic, some robotics and some ideas there as well. And I think, Adriana, have you just popped that into the link? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, I found that a lot of the content that we were talking about today we'd already written about in the article. So yeah, really have a look at that in your own time. And there's loads of resources that we've provided for you in each of those um, areas as well. Okay, uh, I think we've probably covered everything we need to and obviously don't wanna to run too far over time. Jamie, did you have anything that you wanted to mention before we head off? No, I think, I think I'm good. And I think we've shared enough for everyone to get started. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon. Um, it's really great to see that there's PE teachers who are keen to progress on their ICT journey and are looking for new and creative ways and ideas to include that. Um, so please remember to reach out to us if you do want any further support. I know that we've got our conference coming up in June um, that will include more ICT content as well. Um, so that's a great starting point. But if you've got specific questions, definitely reach out and we'd be happy to help. And I'll just say thanks again from DLTV to uh, all of our presenters today, to Adriana and Catherine and Jane. Thank you so much for your time and uh, for answering so many questions. And uh, it's great to see participation, heaps of participation from, uh, from the attendees as well. So thanks, everybody.